Let's take a look at how to install and do the initial setup of Falcon Pi Player on either your Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone controller to use with your light show. So here we have the FPP GitHub. Under Releases, you can click and see all the releases. The latest one will be at the top, and that at this point is 7.1. If you scroll down under Assets, you'll see both the zip files that you will use for flashing an initial SD card and also the .fppos files that you can use for in-place upgrade on your controller. However, there's another option that makes it e easy for you, and that's using the Raspberry Pi imager. So if you go to raspberrypi.com slash software, you'll see the download for the Raspberry Pi imager. So we'll go ahead and download that. And then we can go ahead and install. It's a quick install. And run it. So here we have the Raspberry Pi Imager. And so we can go ahead and choose our OS. And this is where it gets nice. Under Other Specific Purpose OS, there actually is Falcon Player installed there. So you can select that. And then you'll see that there's options for both the Raspberry Pi models and Beagable models. If you need older versions, there is um, all the way back to 6.1 available. But we're going to go ahead and do the latest. So you can go ahead and select the image. And then you'll choose your storage device. You should have your SD card mounted to your computer. Um, if you have multiple devices that show up here, make sure you're selecting the right device. And then we can click the right button. Uh, if the SD card had anything on it before, it is going to give you a warning that it will erase it. Um, but you want to install it fresh, so you can go ahead and click Yes. And then the program will start running. Um, it's first going to wipe the drive if there's anything on it. It will then do the install and then a verify. So it will take a few minutes to go through until it will let this run. And then we'll pick up when it's done. All right, so after you get the confirmation at the end that it's completed, you can press continue. Then you can go ahead and remove that SD card, and we can put it into the Raspberry Pi or the BeagleBone, whatever you're flashing for. So once you go ahead and place your SD card into your device and power it up, you'll give it a minute to or boot. And then we have a couple options in, in order to connect to that device and start the setup. If you are using a wired Ethernet connection and it's plugged in, you need to check your router and see what IP address was assigned. If you're using a wireless adapter or the built-in adapter on a Raspberry Pi, the device will transmit a access point. If you're using a BeagleBone cape like a Culp that has an OLED or any other devices that have an OLED screen, you will see on that device that it has a QR code with a Wi-Fi hotspot and it will also share an IP address of 192.168.8.1. And so we'll go ahead um, on whatever device you're using and search for your wireless networks. And you should see that FPP access point is transmitting. If we go ahead and connect. It's going to prompt for a password. It's going to be Christmas with an uppercase C. Um, there's no concerns about your device being discoverable on that network. And so we should go ahead and we should see that we are able to connect to that access point. So once you're able to connect, if you're using a Wi-Fi device, then you can go to that 192.168.8.1 and you will get the initial setup for FPP. Um, if you are using an Ethernet controller, you use the IP address that you found the router assigned. First one's going to be your UI password. This is going to be used um, if you're accessing the device. Or when you're using FVP Connect in something like XLights, you will be prompted for a password. Um, in my case, I do not use a UI password, so I'll disable that. The next one's going to be required is an OS password. Um, it would be needed if you're going to something at the OS level to access anything. Um, you can set your own password, or you have the option to just use the default password, which is Falcon. 
the next setting is the type of player. So you have uh, player remote. Um, depending on how you use your controller, you'll set this accordingly. Um, for the initial setup, we can leave it just as the default player. Host name, this is going to be what it is seen as on your network. Um, so you can give that as it. And then you can also do an additional description if you want. The next one's going to be sharing statistics with the developers. So anything that's, you know, installed so they can see who's using di what different features. Um, so we can go ahead and enable this. We want them to be able to see and support the most commonly used features that are out there. Um, and additionally supporting that, we have the ability to share crash data with them. So we'll leave that one as it is as default. We have options um, to bring in logos from the vendors. Um, which will appear up in the upper right here it's just a raspberry pi so we only see the pi logo and then we also have the option to send the serial number to the vendor so they can track the devices that are out there if they have uh, capes something like a, a cult controller that is installed on top of uh, beagle bone or there's also capes for uh, raspberry pis as well in this case you can see there's no uh, cape or hat installed, so we'll leave it as none. You can change your locale to wherever you are, and then you have the options to update your time zone and your location. Um, so if the device is on a network that's open to the internet, you can go ahead and just do a look up here, and it will update accordingly. Um, with that, that's all the options to set in the initial setup. So you can click Finish Setup, and it'll take you to the main page of FPP. Um, you have a banner here to reboot because you changed stuff, um, but we'll go ahead and before we do that, go to our network settings. And since this device was done over access point and will work wirelessly, we want to go ahead and, and set that up. So we can enter in our network and the password. And then click the update interface. And then we can go back to the top and we can do a reboot and it will apply our changes. And when the device comes back up, it will connect to our wireless network. So if we go ahead and go to the IP our device was given, we'll bring up the main page of FPP again, but you'll see that our IP address is now on our, our network. Um, we have one more banner here. It's to expand the SD card. Um, so we'll go ahead and click the link to go to storage settings and grow file system. This allows uh, FPP to see the full size of the uh, SD card that's there. So we'll click it and go ahead and confirm. And it will run through a quick thing and you'll see at the end when it's done, it says to please reboot. So you'll go ahead and do the same thing and hit the reboot at the top. And this will reboot your device one more time. So once your controller is back up, there's one last thing you can check. If you go into the help menu about, you can see the current information about the version that your controller is on. If there is a version difference between your local version and the remote version, you then have the option here to upgrade FPP. But you'll see here they're already in sync. So we are on the latest version. So there's no update to be applied at this time.